Hi friends, today we're doing Unit 5, Lesson 3, How Shadows Are Made. We're going to start by going over some of the key vocabulary words you'll be hearing in today's reading. Our first word is transparent, which means clear, see-through, so that light gets through. Our next word is skylight, a window in a ceiling or roof that lets light in. Our next word is opaque, not clear, blocking all light so that none gets through. And our last word is project, to cause light to appear on a surface. We are now going to move into today's reading, which you can find in your small reader. Chapter two, how shadows are made. Do you remember any interesting facts about how light travels? In the last chapter, you learned that it travels in waves that can be measured as wavelengths. You also learned that it travels at a very high rate of speed. Here's another interesting fact. Light waves travel from a source in straight lines that spread out in all directions, like rays. Take a look at the image on the opposite page. In this image, there are several light sources. Each source or dot of light has several rays of light shooting out. Put your finger on the source you can see. Now using your finger, trace the lines of light coming out from that source. Each ray of light is a straight line. Have you ever wondered what happens when a line or path of light bumps into something in its way? Different things may happen, depending on what exactly is in the light's path. If a path of light hits something that is transparent, most of the light will pass right through. Air, water, and glass are all transparent. When light hits these transparent objects, it passes through to the other side. It is almost as if the object isn't there. Most buildings have glass windows so that natural sunlight can travel from the outdoors inside. Have you ever been in a building that has a glass roof or skylight? Sometimes you can see sky and clouds through the skylight. Light cannot travel through all materials. If a path of light hits something that is opaque, the light is absorbed and blocked by the object. It cannot continue in a straight line through the object. Wood, cardboard, and even a person's body are all opaque objects. Light cannot pass through to the other side. Instead, a shadow is created because the light is absorbed. Look around your classroom. Do you see transparent objects through which light is passing? Can you also find opaque objects? You will probably find that your classroom has many more opaque objects than transparent objects. Do you see any shadows? The shadow created by blocked light takes on the shape of the object. Can you guess the object or objects that are making the shadows in these images? The size of a shadow depends on several different things. The closer an object is to a light source, the larger the shadow will be. If you move the same object farther away from the light source, the shadow will become smaller. So the size of the shadow changes even though the size of the object does not. What makes the shadow larger or smaller is the distance of the object from the source of light. You can experiment making larger and smaller shadows just by using your hand. You will need a light source such as a flashlight or projector, several sheets of large white paper and a marker, masking tape, a blank wall, several helpers, and a cardboard cutout of a tree. First, tape a piece of white paper to the wall. Then mark a spot on the floor and tell a classmate to stand on that spot to project the light. He or she should not move. Now try holding the cutout of the tree in front of the light so that a shadow is projected onto the white paper. Have one classmate put a piece of masking tape marked one on the floor next to where you are standing. At the same time, another classmate should trace the shadow of the tree on the white paper. Mark this tracing of your shadow with a one. Next, tape up another sheet of white paper. This time, move away from the light closer to the sheet of paper. Have your classmates mark the floor and shadow tracing with a two. Last, try it one more time. This time, move closer to the light, even closer than the spot marked two. 
have your classmates mark the floor and shadow tracing with a three. Now compare the tracings. Which is the biggest? Where were you standing in relation to the light when the tree made the biggest shadow? Where were you standing when the tree made the smallest shadow? You can have even more fun making shadows with your hands. Try making the shadows in these drawings. Look carefully at one drawing at a time. Try placing your hands exactly as shown in the drawing. Practice several times. When you think you have it right, try making the shape in front of the light. If you got really good, you might want to put on a show for your family. You may now move on to Unit 5, Lesson 3, Google Forms.